Good afternoon, Rich Nass, Embedded Computing Design. I am here with Mohamed Dogar, and he is the Vice President of Global Business Development for Renaissance. Hello, Mo, how you doing? Good, thank you, how are you? It's okay, if I call you Mo? I know, we're, we're friends now. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so what I want to talk to you about, you guys are uh, talking about AIoT as opposed to AI or IoT, and I assume that's just smushing the two things together. What's the Renaissance that? definition of AIoT? Yeah, great question. I think AI and IoT are two independent technologies. And the way I explain this, if you think about the, uh, the IoT, it's like the nervous, digital nervous system, right? And AI is the brain. So it gives the ability to make decisions and control the systems, right? So bringing the two technologies together, we've seen a lot of innovation in IoT space over the mm -hmm. last uh, few years. You know, it's coming from maybe a simple sensor somewhere, you are diagnosing, you are probably seeing its on-off behavior, mm -hmm. if it goes out of range, it sends a message. But now we want to add more intelligence to that decision making, right? So bringing the AI, AI with the IoT will really transform this, really accelerate the digital transformation that's happening, whether it's a factory flow, whether it's, uh, whether it's anywhere else. So uh, from, from our perspective, I think we see three areas um, in, the, in this space. One, I think the biggest challenge is enabling the embedded developers with the right tools so they can create the, the more efficient data sets. So you're bringing embedded into AI because those are two pretty separate domains. Absolutely, I think that's a great point. You know, if you think about the AI and, I, and, and the embedded world, it's kind of two separate domains today. So you've got those kind of software companies who's developing you know, tools to develop models. And then you've got the embedded space, like we have like eSquare Studio, like an IDE that develops the embedded code that runs on, on an embedded target. And today these are two separate domains. So what we're trying to do is to develop some sort of API context. So you can, you can do a handshake, you can integrate the projects from AI to, to the embedded space. So to be clear, are we talking about this AI or are we talking about this machine learning? Because that's a, a lot of what we do in, in our space when you're talking about manufacturing and automation. Yeah, great question. I think it's basically applying intelligence in those predominantly machines and you know intelligent sensors. So mm -hmm. a lot of it is, is machine learning. It's about giving the giving giving the right intelligence to make those decisions in the field. I'm sure you've seen it, right? I mean, how these intelligence is moving from more centralized systems to more distribution systems. Mm -hmm. and that's really where a lot of the development is happening in the industrial space or even in some of the you know, home automation space as well. Okay, now a lot of these spaces that we're addressing are things uh, in a smart building, HVAC for example. You're potentially talking about a user who doesn't know all that much about our world of, of embedded and AI and all of a sudden they're tasked with building a smart HVAC system. And they're like, where the heck do I start? Absolutely. Great question. You're right, this is one of the challenges. Actually, even if you look back in the IoT days as well, these these guys were not 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 connectivity engineers, they're right. embedded engineers, right? And now you put Or they're mechanical engineers. Or mechanical as well in a way. So I think there's two things that's happening. First of all, I think the tools are advanced a lot, and this is something we're doing at Renaissance as part of our reality AI acquisition, is to first of all starting with the data collection, right? So there are two ways. A lot of times, you know, once you know what problem you're trying to solve enabling the tool set to develop more efficient data set. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the work, a lot of the challenges happen, right? Because if it's not efficient, then if, if, if these devices are resource constrained. And going back to your point about mechanical engineers, you've got to make sure for bringing the embedded and the mechanical engineers are not sort of one domain. So taking the data, pre-processing it, so it's tool does it for you, so making it more intuitive. And then, you know, what we're also doing is, is, is using a lot of the professional test labs to take a professional aircon or, or HVAC system, do the data collection in a real environment, and then apply that to the tools that we have as part of Reality AI, that you can pre-process, develop the model, and then execute it onto the, onto the device. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting times for whether you are an AI engineer or not, I think the, the possibilities are endless. Okay, before we close, you mentioned Reality AI a couple of times. Um, what was the impetus for that acquisition? Where does it stand now? Are the two companies together? And is, is it going the way that you guys had thought it was would, would be going? Great question. I mean, before, before I come on to that, I think the AI, when, when we look at it from a semiconductor standpoint, mm -hmm. there are three main areas. Broadly speaking, there is the, the voice, which is you know spoken words or, or natural language understanding. Um, 
vision, which is mostly machine vision, and third is real-time analytics. And this real real-time analytics space is really very, very broad and very large. Mm -hmm. The market opportunity. You know, at Renesas, we are the biggest, uh, you know, supplier of of compute devices. We ship something like nine million microcontrollers a day. So we are in the nine field, million a day. Nine million microcontrollers a day, and that's just the microcontrollers we have. The SOC. Somebody's on really busy. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and shipping of that same quality. So to go back, what, you know, we, we saw this a big opportunity where there are a lot of companies out there talking about vision and voice, and we work with some great partners on that. On the real-time analytics, real problem solving, whether you're looking at a machine, running a motor control, whether it's unbalanced, whether it has failures in the field, really looking for new solutions for that. So we, we, we came across Reality AI, and they were our long-standing partners, and we, we decided to, to, uh, to acquire them. And since then, we had a huge interest from the market, from from home appliance to industrial guys trying to solve these real world problems. Mm -hmm. And what it does is, because the whole tool chain and the technology is based on DSP and signal processing, it really connects well with our embedded engineers. And so I think with the tools that we have, you know, uh, is really helping our customers to apply intelligence and machine learning to a whole host of applications. So yeah, exciting times. Really, really pleased uh, the way we have worked, and then we're also integrating our development environments as well. We're doing this API context where you know switching one project from AI domain to the embedded domain, like I mentioned before. So really bringing the two worlds together. So Reality AI is going to play a key role for us and the and the industry at large. Exciting times, as you said. Thanks, Ma. Thank you, Rich. Nice talking to you.